Thank you very much uh, for the audience and for having me. Well, uh, after these two speakers very well articulated uh, what is going on in Turkey, I just want to emphasize that uh, the situation in terms of media freedom, in terms of uh, the state of journalism in Turkey was already in bad shape. So pandemic did not just um, make the things worse. Things were already in bad shape. It just changed in some degrees and in some levels. Uh, I was just uh, add to some a little bit more background and details. Uh, I want to share my screen. Uh, if you just a second, please. Yes. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes. COVID-19 and journalism in Turkey, the state of media amid cause and fear. Uh, Turkish media before pandemic, uh, both speakers presented a very good picture about Turkey. Uh, as the title of my session hints, the media was already in very bad shape before the pandemic. The government's crackdown on media has a long prologue, unfortunately. It goes back to maybe uh, 10 years in a peaceful fashion. The government has uh, increased and developed its skills of uh, extending its control over media landscape through various and combined uh, methods and measures. One of the measures was financial regulation and uh, the new, the change of the ownership of media outlets by uh, businessmen loyal to the government. The government did not just encourage it, it just uh, forced on some occasions. And uh, long story short, things began to get extremely worse since the coup in 2016. After that, at least 180 media outlets were shut down. Uh, more than 100 journalists were placed behind bars. And the crackdown has never uh, dissipated to this day, unfortunately, and uh, the level of its intensity may be subsided, but it has never ended. Uh, according to New York based Committee to Protect Journalists, Turkey is the worst jailer of journals in the world. Uh, more than 70 journals are behind bars, but the number is, uh, is a matter of controversy because another media platform. P24, Istanbul-based, uh, it puts this number as 92. According to its measurement, uh, media workers in different roles also included to this, uh, to this count. Before the pandemic in Turkey, we have the ever-present threat of imprisonment, repeated political crackdowns on opposition media, growing unemployment due to financial strain, these were the major challenges that media members and journalists faced before COVID-19 completely altered the landscape of the debate. During the COVID-19, we have seen different forms of censorship, both imposed by the government and self-adopted by the media as to avoid government uh, pressure and punishment. The, the reporting of COVID-19 cases unfortunately became very difficult, if not entirely impossible. Authorities significantly limited the scope of media coverage and uh, journalists were unable to verify and check the accuracy of the official statistics. This is very important because the Turkish Health Ministry on a daily basis, they provide numbers and uh, they update the public with fresh numbers, but we are not sure because we have some reports on social media that uh, some of the cases could have relation to COVID-19 health reasons, but they were not registered as such. So uh, in this area, we have a problem of accuracy. Some of the journalists in several parts of Turkey, in, in Barton, in Kastamonu, in Gaziantep, in Ankara, 
they face persecution after uh, what the persecutor says, inciting panic among the public. The uh, Fox TV and German Fatih Portugal, one of the most watched TV shows in Turkey, he also faced investigation, but the investigation later dropped. Many of the deaths, as I said before, uh, were suspected to have relation to pandemic, but were not registered as such. There are many reports by Reporters Without Borders and Amnesty International. Uh, they confirm that the, the pandemic only amplified the, what is already existing in Turkey, the climate of fear. Uh, Amnesty International report says, journalists reporting on COVID-19 or even posting on social media feared they may join the threats of Turkey's independent media workers currently behind bars. Another point which is uh, overlooked and undernoticed that this pandemic hit media financially in very serious terms. Uh, many of the media outlets got, went through a brutal stress test. The, the circulation of print media has dropped 25%. Maybe, probably most of the, uh, half of the press workers uh, who joined a survey by press union associated with a left left wing disc? They began to work at home remotely. According to the survey, six percent of the journalists sacked. Uh, Twelve percent of them they just get their payment very late, not on time. And five percent this survey reveals they did never get their payment during the pandemic. Many of the journalists report complaints on social media that they, they are forced to work in unhealthy conditions and many media outlets issued salary cut. There was another important issue in April. The government uh, following the footsteps of Iran, Venezuela and many other countries and China as well. Uh, the government debated a bill to uh, to provide a prison amnesty for inmates to reduce the risk of virus contraction in overcrowded prison complex in Turkey. More than 19,000 90,000 convicted inmates were released, uh, which is uh, included mafia bosses, mafia bosses, rapists, and killers. Unfortunately, despite the campaign from lawmakers from Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, unfortunately, journalists were excluded uh, from this amnesty bill. They are still behind bars. And I mentioned about the official toll of coronavirus that we cannot verify the accuracy of the uh, statistics, but I want to share with you what health ministry provided. In total, more than 5 million, nearly 6 million tests were carried out by the health officials across Turkey. Uh, these days, we can see reports on social media that in Istanbul, many hospitals, they lack test kits, enough test equipment uh, to, to expand their test coverage of the population. The number of cases so far, the infected cases uh, were presented by the Turkish government as more than 250,000. The number of deaths, they are nearly 6,000. And the series the ill patients who are in intense care, uh, intense care unit, uh, 686. Yesterday, there were more than 1,000 confirmed new cases. This shows that uh, despite the positive presentation by the officials, uh, unfortunately, the pandemic shows no slowing down. And yesterday, 22 citizens lost their lives. Uh, to sum up the, this presentation as briefly as possible, uh, Reporters Without Borders, they reported uh, in a recent documentation in July that 
more than a dozen journalists were arrested. Some of them were released later because of their coverage of uh, COVID-related deaths. Uh, the situation for Turkish media became only worse during the pandemic. And uh, the cli climate of fear has been solidified. The coronavirus helped the government to find new excuses to extend and expand. It is, uh, it is already firm grip on media. In economic terms, media was not without uh, any immunity to the impact of pandemics, economic strain and stress. And many media outlets, uh, they just embrace auto-censorship. During the pandemic, half of the journalists began to work remotely, and some of them were forced to work in very unhealthy conditions without any payment warranty. And to make matters worse, last month in July, Turkish parliament enacted a new law about a social media, you know, to regulate the social media landscape, which has been the main source of Turkish people's access to information and their uh, main tool of expression. Given the fact that the mainstream media, as Yavuz Baydar noted, uh, mostly under control of the government through direct or indirect mechanisms, social media remains the last, uh, the, remains the last shelter for people to express themselves. And in July, they introduced new measures, uh, such as many of the social media giants like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, they are forced to share their data with the Turkish authorities. And uh, they have to, from now on, store their data inside their Turkey. And the anonymity of the users, for instance, we launch a campaign for some curves on social media. We, uh, we set up a trash, uh, we set up a hash, hashtag to uh, galvanize the public. From now on, Turkish government will be able to extract the information of anonymous users. So uh, this law introduced another, another aspect which is heavy fines and compensation against these technology companies. If, as a journalist, Abdullah Yassin, I uh, post a critical tweet, if Facebook or Twitter refuses to remove it on the grounds of free speech, the Turkish government will be able to rely on, will be able to impose a heavy uh, fine and compensation. So this also threatens and deters the technology companies to advance their operations in Turkish media market. Uh, this is the basics of my presentation. Thank you very much.